Hi guys and welcome to my channel. This is your girl Megan with Fit Financial Planning. Working out your own financial plan one lesson at a time. Hi guys and thank you so much for joining me once again. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. We are continuing with our third installment of the of analyzing a quote. All right, so we are dissecting and analyzing the Sunlam quote that I did, basically just going over the important parts. Um, but as I mentioned in my previous video, the quote does also qualify as a contract. So it is very important to read the quote and understand exactly what you are agreeing to because it is a contract, a potential contract, okay? And should your quote go through, application go through then that means then they will generate the contract and the policy schedule and all this information as stated on the uh, quote will also be on the contract and it's advisable to read every single thing on the contract okay so that you are familiar with what the exclusions are what you're paying for the benefits correct um and just terms that if you don't understand, then you can easily ask your financial advisor, wealth manager to break it down for you so that you understand um, in which events can you actually claim. Because the only reason for buying insurance is to obviously, you know, cover yourself in case of a claim event. So you need to know what you are buying and you need to know um, when you can claim and if you know when you can claim then you can benefit from the policy but if you don't even know when uh, your claim would be sufficient or applicable then you're just paying for nothing and remember you don't even get your premiums back insurance is sort of a grudge purchase it's the life insurance part of it or the death benefit that actually gets paid out to the beneficiaries or to your estate or if ceded to the bank pays for your mortgage um, but your disability benefits and your critical illness, income protection, your sickness benefits, these, you know, pay you while you're still alive. So you need to know um, which events are important and which events you can claim for. So in this segment, we are continuing um, and we'll just continue here with the general exclusions. And I think it's something important that I need to highlight. So as we go along, I'm just going to highlight on the very important uh, sections that you need to just look out for on, on any quote that you get. So um, this might be standard, you know, this is, I guess it's standard information to a lot of uh, different um, providers out there. Um, they have to um, divulge all this information. So it is there for you to read. You just need to read it. So um, uh, I'd advise you guys to read it. And if you don't understand, ask your financial planner to break it down for you and explain exactly what it means. So let's quickly go through the general exclusions. So basically this applies to um, mostly your, I would say critical illness or your disability benefits. Because um, in this case, you know, there's a high chance of you becoming disabled or being severely ill because of it. And you'll see here that these general exclusions don't, um, the above general exclusion, exclusions don't necessarily apply to your death benefit. Okay. So basically these would be participating in any riots, insurrections, civil, civil commotion. Uh, so also um, civil commotion would be your protests, uh, military or hostile action, or an act of terrorism. Um, commits or attempts to commit crime of murder, assault, housebreaking, theft, kidnapping, robbery. Um, but I mean, should you die as a result of any of these happening, um, obviously the death um, benefit will pay out. So they, you know, obviously there'll be an investigation done. Um, and then obviously, you know, once they've received everything from the authorities, then they'll process the claim and Obviously, that money gets paid out to your beneficiaries or your estate. Um, however, if any of these um, you participate in and you have disability benefits, then these will be excluded. So you participate in cave diving, commercial diving, exploration of underwater wrecks for financial gain, participate in motorized racing, speed contests, um, participate in professional boxing, kickboxing, 
takes drugs, medicine, um, medicine, or you're addicted to uh, prescription medicine, um, or drives a form of motorized vehicle on the public road while his or her blood alcohol level exceeds the legal limit. Um, yeah, so these are basically, you know, some of the exclusions, so you can read through those. And then you get other exclusions, um, you'll see those um, under special descriptions. Then, immediate life cover, okay? So basically what all of this means is that um, immediate life cover will apply from the date we receive the application with all the questions fully and correctly answered and signed by uh, the life assured and the applicant until the earliest of the final underwriting decision being made um, that the application is accepted, declined or deferred 30 days after signing the application form or uh, until the earliest of us cancelling the cover in writing. So basically you will get immediate cover as, as long as you have started the application process. Okay. Um, for So it says here for any insured for whom death applied. So let's say you die in the process of actually applying. Um, you know, for this benefit, if you have death benefit, and I've submitted the forms and I've signed them on the 23rd, and my policy is only starting on the 1st of January or 1st of December, then, and I die tomorrow, then free cover will apply, all right? So they have a minimum, it will be limited to the smaller of the initial amount, and I think the max would be 500,000 that will be paid out, okay? So it will be um, payable to the beneficiary because remember, you haven't even paid for this um, benefit. So it's just to say that, you know what, if anything happens to you before we even receive your first um, debit order um, or the first payment has been made and then you die before the debit order goes through, then shame, they will honor uh, the cover and they will pay you up to 500,000 depending on how much your cover was for, okay? So this is basically immediate life cover. So as soon as you've started the process with them, immediate, immediate cover will apply, apply. So the immediate, they say here, the immediate life cover will apply only in respect of death from unnatural causes. So basically you must not have been sick. Because, I mean, think about it. You Someone takes out a life policy on their deathbed. Do you think that the that the insurance policy is going to pay out within, I mean, it's just, no, I mean, that's a potential door for fraud. You know, I could take out a life policy for someone who I know that is going to die and I'm the beneficiary. So the normal contractual exclusions will apply and no immediate life cover will be payable if death is directly or indirectly caused by the life insured participating in any dangerous pursuits. Um, like, or, you know, or saying that, you know, um, I'm taking out this life policy and I want my family to benefit from it. Let me, you know, go speed racing and I die and so they get the money. They will not pay. Exposure to risks beyond the border of South Africa. Let's say you go to a high, a, a, a war-torn country um, where there are, you know, like mine, you know, what do they call these mine bombs? In these African countries, I mean, these are not generally found in South Africa, but you'll find them, you know, in some of these dark countries in Africa. And, you know, the insurance company will be on some, what were you doing there? Why were you there in the first place? And that means that they will not um, pay, that immediate life cover won't apply. Then you will get free cover. So free cover is just basically to summarize, free cover is, let's say now, my, I sign my policy, I sign the quote, um, and my, you know, policy is due to start on the 1st of January. Um, I chose that as a start date, but I've signed everything now, quote is accepted, application, medicals are done, and let's say around the 10th of December, my policy is accepted, medicals are done, and everyone is happy. Between, and then let's say my debit order only starts on the 1st of January, that just means that I have free cover from the date um, my policy is accepted to when they receive the first premium or to when the policy is supposed to start. Okay, so this is basically what that means and you can read uh, through that as well. Right, um, this just means here that you cannot borrow against the plan. 
Um, so you cannot use this as something that you can borrow from. However, you can use the death benefit um, as a session where you can cede it to the bank um, if it's for mortgage purposes, okay, if you're trying to protect um, the mortgage cover. So you can't borrow against the plan. Um, so basically, this just means that a payment's not made. It means that you have 30 days in order to pay premiums. So your policy can be active with one month in arrears, okay? However, if your policy is two months in arrears, if the second month, because what usually happens is, let's say you miss your debit order, okay? You had insufficient funds. Something happens, you didn't plan for it. You miss your premium one month. The policy will still continue. And the second month on your debit order date, they will collect the arrear premium as well as your current premium. So they'll do a double debit automatically. If that fails, then your policy will be cancelled with immediate effect. Okay. But insurance companies are very good. They follow up with you. They follow up with your broker. They call you. Um, they make necessary arrangements. And yeah, that's that. Then... Um, you get your death benefit. Um, this only pays out if you die. Just one thing I want to highlight here is that they say we will not admit a claim if death is caused by suicide, guys. And no suicide is very prevalent. It's actually a pandemic in this um, day and age that we live in. But we need to also note that um, should you take out a policy and you are, uh, and that's for your family, and you you know, get the brainwave to commit suicide. That policy will not pay out. Unfortunately, it will not pay out. So you need to think about things like that. And if it's confirmed that it's suicide, it will not. Pay. It will just be a waste of money. So it's things like that that I think people are not aware of. Um, you know, and if it's committed within 24 months, that's two years. So basically, suicide is has a 24 months exclusion from the start date of cover so you know and the general exclusions also apply so that's just one thing i want to point out um and then obviously you can just read through everything there um basically all this wording is repetitive and i really don't want to um waste too much time um, just trying to, you know, go through and explain every single detail because this information will be obviously applicable or available on your contract. But I just want to highlight what are the things to look at when you are presented with a quote. Look for these things. If that service provider doesn't put all of this information on their quote, um, ask to see the tech specs, ask, ask to see the annexures, ask to see Ask them what are the exclusions, what are the waiting periods, um, because this information should be there, you know. Um, so basically, comprehensive severe illness plus is a standalone product. Um, the plus range covers um, maximum payouts, okay, and these are the conditions they cover. Um, so you are covered from the first day, and then basically on this benefit here. You are covered. So this is the uh, table on the percentages on how much they will cover for a specific claim. So this is cancer. If you have cancer, um, then this is level A and B is the most severe. And then obviously level D and C is least severe. So depending on where, you know, after the medical, the chief medical officer has looked at your claim and you've submitted the claim with all the supporting um you know, reports and tests being done, and then they will then determine uh, the um, how much you get paid out. So if you've had any of these Ill illnesses, strokes, heart attack, uh, coronary bypass or cancer, um, depending whether you've got the least severe or the most severe, you will still get 100% of the payment. But that's on the plus benefit, okay? Waiting period. Uh, one thing to note is that they give a five-year waiting period for any joint or hip replacement or a knee replacement. So any joints or any joints that you've replaced, ankle, knee or hip, all right, um, you have to have your policy for more than five years in order to claim for anything uh, that may happen naturally to your joints. OK, maybe a critical illness event happens or a disability event happens because of your joints 
um, five years must have passed from starting the policy for them to actually, you know, honor this claim. Okay. However, if if it, it if anything happens to your joints or knees or ankles as a result of an accident, then that is covered. There is no five-year waiting period. The only waiting period is for natural causes. If something happens on your joints because of natural causes and a claim event is triggered, then the policy must be five years or older. Okay. So here, the maximum rand amounts would be obviously as per the claim table. These you will get on the uh, on the contract, um, and then standalone or accelerated benefits. Remember, you under, you all understand this by now. These um, benefits are standalone. Um, so you can see that uh, if it if we admit a claim and the benefit is an accelerated benefit, we, we will reduce the cover amount by the benefit, but whether a benefit is a standalone or accelerator will be determined in this will multiple conditions possible, okay? Survival period, we will admit a claim only if the insured survived more than 14 days from the date um, the contractual claim event has been met, okay? So two weeks must have lapsed before you can actually submit a claim of, of any nature of illness, okay? Exclusions, the general specific exclusions will apply. Then we go to comprehensive disability. It is a standalone policy, but because we've got the plus, the benefit also includes permanent occupational disability up to retirement or the age of 70, depending on what um, age you chose. So remember, I chose 65. Um, and then permanent impairment claim events for as long as the, ben the benefit is in order and accidental claim events for as long as. So this is all covered. What is also covered is this that I stated in uh, video one or two, that all of this is also included automatically because I've selected plus, okay? And then obviously here they're saying the claim event will be as indicated by the table. Um, and then occupational disability cover. This just means that if you are unable to perform your work, your occupation, um, that you, you like this is your livelihood let's say you're a surgeon and you cannot operate anymore um they will cover you to that extent okay um but also to a certain percentage if you can still probably lecture as a as a doctor or a surgeon and become a lecturer then you know you are still working but just the fact that you can't use your hands and become a surgeon but you can still teach um as a doctor okay or a professor so it will just determine, um, you know, how they will pay out the claim. So occupational disability cover is included. With other um, providers, you have to actually take out occupational disability cover as a standalone product, okay, and then pay a premium for it. But with Sunlum, it's included. And then... Uh, basically, it just gives the terms and conditions. I mean, even students are covered um and then they give the um conditions and then also here there's a five-year waiting period as I, as i mentioned and this is for um your your joint hip or knee however uh, it's only applicable for natural causes and it says here that the waiting period is not applicable in the event the results are from unnatural causes so if it's a um an accident, then you're rest assured that you are covered. Okay. Then we look at the replacement uh, of benefits. If you're going to replace a benefit, all right, we need to make sure that you understand um, what type of cover you are replacing because your five year waiting period um, might cease and then in your new application you start an, a new five-year waiting period so you just need to be aware of those um, those waiting periods when you um, replace a policy okay or replacing of, ben of benefits actually and then uh, this is admittance of a claim so basically they say here for occupational disability we will only admit a claim if a claim event occurs before retirement age 70 or the cover end date so in my case it is 65. 
It says here we will only admit a claim if the disability or impairment is caused by directly or solely by bodily injury or an illness. A disability or impairment is permanent after the life assured has undergone optimal re uh, reasonable treatment. Um, we have not previously admitted a claim for the same event except if the claim is listed under a uh, mucoskeletal uh, system in the claim event uh, in the above table and the claim is from a different limb. Uh, the life insured survived more than 10 days from the date of the contractual claim. The event defi definition has been met. The survival period will only be applicable to conditions where prognosis of survival beyond 10 days is not certain based on the available medical evidence. So you see, there's a lot of things that go into a claim. Um, it's not just granted. So they have to um, assess the claim and to take everything into account before they pay anything out. Okay. So here that just says that the amount will be paid out as a lump sum. If we admit a claim, we will pay the percentage of the cover amount, whether it's 150, 75% or 100%, and the amount will be paid as a lump sum. And remember, this lump sum paid out is tax-free. Right. If the amount we pay is equal to or more than the cover amount, the benefit will end. So let's say your benefit qualifies for 100%, and for critical illness, I get paid out 700 and whatever my cover is for, then that cover will cease. I won't have that cover anymore. If the amount we pay is less than the cover amount, we will reduce the cover amount by that amount that was paid. So let's say I qualify for 400,000 Rand from my critical illness cover, they will reduce, they will deduct it from that 700 and then I'll be left with the balance, probably 375 or whatever that will be left um, that I have cover for, okay? And then the reduced cover amount will continue to increase on every plan anniversary if the benefit gro growth is applicable to the plan. So remember, um, as the benefit, you know, remember my um, cover is level, but it grows by 5% every year, meaning that once they've taken out that claim portion that I've claimed for, whatever's left will still continue to grow as per the uh, benefit growth plan that I um selected okay so these are the exclusions all right um and then this is temporary uh incapacity cover for accidents claim event um this is basically the same information um and if you're interested you can definitely read through it but everything is more or less the same okay and then how will payment of a claim affect the plan benefits? So as I said, if it's standalone or accelerated, it might eat into the life cover or reduce your cover, or they'll pay out uh, the full amount depending on what you are claiming for. Okay, But it's also important that your broker or financial advisor or consultant has further information and they can explain the benefits in more detail. If your application is accepted, you will receive a contract a contractual document containing the terms and conditions of your benefit okay contracts are very important guys we need to read them and here they also state that the benefit descriptions in this quotation are only a summary of the most important features so you can see how long this quote is but this is just a summary of the important features okay um and that's ridiculous because this is quite a long document but once you understand this then you understand you know what you gain um, from this policy okay and then um, basically a session if you can see this policy to the bank if you wish um, but you'll have to do so in writing it's your it's your responsibility to obtain this consent so they will need it in writing let's say from fnb or netbank we're able to say that um, you know to note them on this policy replacement of insurance when you place when you are replacing insurance you need to make sure that you understand what you're replacing okay and it's important that the financial advisor does an analysis and compares the two quotes to make sure that you are not paying new charges you are you know you are not being unfairly uh, discriminated against um, you're not losing any cover 
and waiting periods, you know, new waiting periods don't affect you. Um, so it's just things like that you need to be aware of. And then Sanlam just says that they subscribe to the protection of personal information, inquiries, client care compliance. Um, and if you have complaints, where to call. And yeah, basically that's that. And then protection of client information, um, claim procedure, you need to claim as soon as possible. Cooling off period, that's important. Basically what this means that if you've signed this contract and let's say you've got, after two weeks, you feel that, you know what, this is not um what i actually wanted you can cancel it within the period of 31 days um and you do so in writing okay and then they will refund any payments made and it just shows you how um long the quote is valid for it's usually for one month from the date the quote was issued and then this is just for the office use a summary of your details and the commission and and that's the end of the quote all right i hope you guys really enjoy this and um, you've learned a lot and you've learned the importance of a quote and you've learned the importance of reading everything um, on your quote and understanding exactly what type of benefits you have subscribed to and you know how these are paid you understand the exclusions the waiting periods you understand the commissions um, and you understand you know how your benefits will grow how your premiums will grow and um, you understand that uh, you know insurance is a grudge purchase yes but it is essential um, it's part of financial planning risk planning so that you are aware and that you know that at least you know you're covered in an event anything happens to you while you're still alive and then also you are aware that you can leave something behind for your beneficiaries. So until our next upload, until I see you again, thank you so much for joining me. I've dissected the Sunlam quote. I might just show you a few other quotes and what they look like, but obviously I won't go through everything. Um, maybe I'll show you a bright rock quote and a momentum quote, just to, just to show you what they look like and then um, just see how they're structured. And yeah, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and God bless.